In June of 1988, GE Plastics announced perhaps its most ambitious market development program ever, to design and build an entirely new type of house. A house that would explore new building systems and techniques using high-performance engineering polymers. The project was called Living Environments. Unlike concept houses of the past, it would serve as a living laboratory, continually changing to evaluate new ideas and help drive change in building and construction, the world's largest materials market. The project would explore every facet of modern living, including home automation, heating and cooling, appliances, and related systems such as security and entertainment. Design work progressed quickly from concept drawings and scale models to a full-size mock-up that allowed the GE Advanced Design and Development Group to evaluate how the house, its systems, and its components would interrelate once completed. Already a topic of considerable interest at trade shows and in the press, formal groundbreaking took place in September of 1988, and the project was officially underway. Since the Living Environments House was located at GE Plastics headquarters in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, the most immediate challenge was facing the rigors of a New England winter. As a result, the foundation was poured using new Valox Plastics concrete forms under a 14,000 square foot bubble. Living Environments was more than just a GE Plastics concept. More than 50 partner companies from around the world contributed products and expertise, making it one of the most unique collections of building technology in the world. After only three years of development and 13 months actual construction, the Living Environments Concept House was officially opened in October of 1989. Contrary to popular belief, it was never intended to be an all-plastic house. Quite the contrary. The idea, symbolized by the entrance to the house, was to use the performance and function of thermoplastics in harmony with traditional materials like wood and stone. At just over 3,000 square feet, the house did use more than 45,000 pounds of plastics of all types, about 30% of the total materials used in the house. The ultimate goal is to someday build a high-quality, more efficient house with a total content of as much as 70% thermoplastics. As you enter the house, the most frequently asked question is, where's the plastic? Again, the goal was to build a house for people with large open expanses, hardwood floors, and a reflection of traditional tastes and values but also subtly providing the latest in technology throughout. A central computer, for instance, serves as a home office with fax, printer, and word processor, but it also runs all the systems in the house. A unique baseboard raceway system carries all the house telemetry, electricity, telephone, data, and security systems, connecting every room to the computer in an easily accessible manner. The rest of the living environment structure is devoted to how performance plastics can be used to build these visions of the future. The total exterior of the house, for instance, represents a range of different GE plastics. Two different types of roof are used. On the south side, these injection molded Norel resin panels are designed to replace traditional flame retardant cedar shakes. From a fire safety aspect, GE Plastics can actually outperform many traditional roofing materials and is lightweight and easy to install. On the north side of the house, tiles of tough polymer and glass composite are used, in this case stamped for a traditional slate roof look. Siding for the house is a thermoplastic coated with weather-resistant g resin and the stucco surfaces are one of the most interesting new products developed for the construction industry, G-Set High Density Foam. This high strength foam can be installed using standard drywall screws, then coated with an attractive polymer stone finish. The same material in higher densities is also used for these paving tiles. Though lightweight and easy to install, they give a look, feel, and wear resistance of stone.
The house's extensive central atrium windows feature lightweight, impact-resistant Lexan sheet. A special coating was used to cut harmful UV transmissions by up to 40%. Moving inside, a number of basic wall construction methods are presented. While plastics might effectively replace traditional 2x4 construction in a number of ways, the biggest productivity gains lie in continuous process systems like plastics extrusion, which can produce virtually endless sections of wall panels. A system like this may incorporate channels for wiring and plumbing and even lends itself to concepts like radiant wall panels for comfortable, efficient heating and cooling. The raceways shown earlier are also integrated as part of the door frame, allowing integral switches and eliminating the need for separate mounting boxes in the wall. Another concept would run electricals through a ceiling profile, which would include heat vents, track lighting, and even a water channel for a room-to-room -room sprinkler system. Floor systems in the house look at a number of ideas, including this experimental wood strand corrugation used to create channels for heat transfer. On top of the subfloor are these G-set foam waffle panels that offer heat and sound insulation, but also provide channels for plumbing and wiring. These become particularly important in the bathroom, where a central water manifold can be used to connect fixtures using flexible tubing and quick connect couplings. These work particularly well with a new family of prototype plumbing cassettes like this sink module. The drain, trap, and hot and cold water feeds are all integrated into a single blow molded unit which can be clipped into the wall system. Together with a modular vanity and sink, the whole unit could be installed and plumbed in under an hour. The same holds true for this shower cassette or this slimline toilet where the blow molded tank is built right into the wall to reduce the unit's overall size. The unit's waste preprocessor and pressurized system also allows narrower pipe dimensions throughout the entire sanitary system. The house holds hundreds of interesting ideas and prototypes, even in the basement, where a number of new foundation concepts are shown. New ideas in concrete also extend to recycle. A new architectural concrete has been developed using reground car parts and business machine housings to produce a wear-resistant, lightweight engineering concrete. It's a product that has proven attractive, functional, and offers a number of long-term recycle solutions. Also in the basement is this prototype for an entirely new concept in modularized heating and air conditioning. Called the TEC, Total Environmental Control Unit, it combines all aspects of heating, cooling, air and water conditioning into an energy efficient modular unit which can grow to meet the needs of the house and the family. Though the Living Environments Concept House is impressive in size and scope, the real goal of the project was to develop building systems and components which can be used in smaller, more affordable housing. The same panels produced in these factories might be used to build small, single-family starter houses and apartments, or larger houses and commercial buildings. GE is studying the entire manufacturing and factory automation scenario that will someday unlock the increased productivity and efficiency that characterizes engineering plastics in so many other industries. It is important to understand that the completion of the Living Environments House marks not the end of the program, but rather the beginning. Today, Building and construction is perhaps one of the most conservative industries in the world. It will take an alliance of innovative companies and the development of a wide range of advanced factory and material technology if the dream of quality, cost-effective housing is ever to become a reality. Living environments is a blueprint and a first step in meeting one of society's most fundamental challenges.